today I'm going to start a new pine needle basket. And these are the colors that I have selected. These are green pine needles. I purchased these from Lynn White. This is her card. Hey, there's a gift inside. Oh, isn't that cool? I didn't even notice this. Thank you. Hope you enjoy the needles and a surprise gift. Well, I could probably put that as a decoration on the basket. How cool is that? All right, so people sometimes ask, where can I buy needles from? All right, so here is a person, Lynn Hoyt, shop year round at Midnight Quiller on Etsy.com. And I just saw these colors and I thought, ooh, that's a really nice color. These are dyed needles. They're not natural green this way, but you know, sometimes we like to, the, the green color. I love the color green. The, the ends have sort of a dark, almost a dark blue color on them. So you could use that as a decorative element if you want to. I'm probably not gonna do that. And I'm going to do this, which is a cherry color. I dyed these myself. They started off this natural color, and I bought this off of somebody else. I can't remember the name um, of the person, but I thought it would be nice to combine these three warm, earthy tones in a basket. I'm going to be using this wine-colored sinew, which kind of matches that, and this, uh, I think this is not natural, this is a brown sinew which matches that and I don't have any green sinew what I have is this cord green it's a little bit harder to work with it's slightly waxed but not very waxed it's going to be a little bit harder to work with because I used this material before on another basket and it went with wrapping you've got to wrap super super tight so I am going to be using copper coiling gauges so that I can push my threads close together with that. And I thought I have to have a little contrast. I love contrast, so I'm gonna include some white. And this is white sinew. Oh boy, I gotta find the end. This is gonna be a trick finding that end. Sometimes the first, you could spend five, 10 minutes. Wait a minute, I think I just got lucky. Aha, I found it, I found the thread. Yay, that was easy. Okay, and that one's already ready. And that one's been used because it's not a full roll. Um, you notice that these rolls are shorter and these are longer. Um, you're probably wondering where you get your different colors because mostly you can find the natural and you can find the black pretty easy in most craft stores. But finding these other colors is a little more difficult well all right i'm going to confess i ordered them from china i searched the internet um on amazon and i looked at a lot of different suppliers and i found a supplier i don't remember the name but they had every single color you could imagine so i stocked up on all kinds of colors there's more colors that i don't have what i thought i would do with this basket is i'm going to make a basket without a center. Um, so I'm gonna start coiling right away. And I thought, since I'm, I want to incorporate all these colors, I thought I would mix the colors. So I'm gonna mix all three colors together. I think that would be beautiful. And so I started to cut the caps off my needles and I'm just gonna try to do it evenly. Probably I'll grab like a green one the next time I'll grab that color, the natural color, and next I'll grab the burgundy so I can keep the colors evenly dispersed throughout my basket. So, In this video, I'm going to show you how to start a basket without using a center. With this basket, I am combining three different colors of pine needles. I decided to mix the three colors together. As I cut off the caps and to save time, I did enough of them to create two bundles of needles because that's 
what it usually takes to make a basket, two bundles. The next day, this is my project tote, where I usually pack all of my supplies for the current pine needle basket. I usually use this tote when I travel with my husband. While he drives, I can work a basket. The cherry colored needles are too long, so I cannot close the cover. I use my longer needles when I'm working on projects at home. While traveling, I usually only pack the shorter needles. Because I'll be starting off a tightly turned coil, I'm going to soak my needles to help prevent breakage. I do not normally soak my needles because most of the time I prefer to start a basket with a center. I'm going to soak my needles for about five minutes before starting my basket. One concern that I have about soaking them is that because they're dyed needles, we have green needles and we have cherry needles, and those colors may mix, which could make sort of a brown color. Sometimes when you soak reed or needles, you're going to get a little bit of color coming off of them. Now, I did not use hot water. It is um, actually kind of room temperature. It was a little bit warm when I put it in. So far, the water looks clear. So it doesn't look like the color is coming off, so that's good. I'm only going to do this with the first few rows starting off because they're going to be bent in a tight oil corner. Let me just grab a needle. All right, here's a needle that's not wet. And if I try to bend this, well, that's actually bending really, really good. It's not, but how tightly can, oh, see, see, it, it did break. So that's what I want to avoid. None of these have been glycerin. I don't think I put any glycerin on this one. And this is one of the reasons why I usually start my baskets off with a wood center. While well, those are soaking, let me talk about this basket here. It's not, not a fancy basket, but um, I wanted a basket with a cover. And I made this basket because my best friend, my childhood best friend, Yvonne, she made this and she gave it to me. And I told her I would make her a basket. She says, no, 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 make yourself a basket. And so it had to be a purple basket because this has got purple beads on it. She does lovely work. She let me pick out the what I wanted. I think it's called a kabuchin. And I had to have a purple basket. When we were children, we used to spend the night at her grandmother's house in the purple bedroom. And the purple bedroom was her daughter's room. So I have a purple bedroom in my house. More like lavender, not purple. purple. So I had to make a basket that was purple and it had to have a cover because I didn't want this to be in the center of the basket hitting in, in the bottom. So this, ouch, I just put myself on a pin. This basket is made coiling with, and I wrapped the original row to help hold everything in place before doing the tie stitch. And so I made that basket as a place to keep those, all my special needles, my tapestry needles, my darning needles, and my basket making needles, all my, oh, and this doily. Okay, this is actually an old fashioned powder puff that used to belong to my husband's mother. Yeah, she crocheted this delicate doily and she had it stuck on here with a few pins stuck in it. Well, I decided I like that. So I'm just, I just went ahead and I sewed it on so that it's now permanently affixed to this. The basket is now home for my specialty needles. And so there's a lot of memories here from my best friend growing up to my husband's mother who's gone to heaven. And I have a piece of her handiwork. I have so anyways, this basket was done without a wooden center because there's no need to have a center in it. The only thing that's going to be shown is this top part. And that's, this is what I wanted to be the feature of the basket. Okay, it's been about five minutes, so they should be wet enough, hopefully. So I'm going to remove them from the water and I'm going to put them on a towel. And so far I don't see any bleeding of color, so that's good.
going to start filling up my gauge. I'm going to make sure I get a good variety of different colors. check my gauge to see whether or not the slide's easy. It slides easy, so I think I need more needles. I'm going to make sure I'm putting a variety of colors. Okay, now it does not want to slide. So now it is good. I have them, some of them are longer and some are short, and that's actually okay. I'm going to start off a little bit narrower, so I think that would be actually pretty good. And anyways, I don't want all the, all the needles to be the same length on this side either. So that's going to be a good starting place. And this gauge is, this is the size that I want my gauge to be, the entire basket. get my needle ready and this is going to be doing coiling tightly I think I'll choose a little bit shorter needle this time uh, yeah I think we'll go with that one all right I'm going to start off with one arm link two arm links Sometimes I do three. Two is probably easier because the thread gets really, really long when you're doing, but I'm going to do wrapped rows, so the thread is going to go really, really fast. Um, because I'm doing a wrapped row, I'm not going to split the sinew. I'm going to just use it, so I'm going to leave like a tail, about a two foot tail. So my needle is ready. And then I'm going to rearrange my camera so that you'll be able to see better what I'm doing. Okay. Just kind of get myself situated here. So I'm going to be working with a long thread. I don't want anything like scissors to catch in the way, so I want to put those out of reach. not see these but my needles are right here in front of me okay and I don't want them too close because I don't want my long thread to catch so I'm about ready to okay, start with my gauge I'm going to be feeding the needles in this end which is the wide end beginning and end I think I'll slide this up here and this does taper okay that's the same size as the gauge but as I go out here, it gets a little bit smaller, and I think it actually would be a good idea to have it be a little bit smaller to start off with. I want to find the end of my thread, so because I'm going to have a tail left over. So I'm going to take this tail, and I'm going to lay it right in the needles so that I can wrap this around and I'm actually going to go all the way to the end. Starting off with coiling right away is not the easiest way to start a basket. I'm not going to lie to you. It is far more challenging than starting with the center, which could be made of wood, leather, stone, porcelain, or whatever you come up with for center. The beginning is always very awkward to start. So I'm going to jump ahead where the video is a little bit more clear and the process a little bit more understandable. I am basically wrapping as I coil. When starting a basket without a center, I think it is best to do wrapped rows. So if there's any breakage, at least it won't be visible. Plus having so many extra threads, you can more easily secure the beginning coils to have a, a good center. I'm going to start wrapping 
I'm gonna wrap about a quarter of an inch, which that's it right there. And I'm gonna hold this together. Now I wanna make a stitch. Now this time, since I'm out here on the fourth uh, coil, I'm not gonna go into that like I was at the beginning. I'm actually gonna go right, there's a stitch right there connecting these two. I wanna go right, do I wanna go this side or that side? I think I'll go this side. So I'm actually including two coils as I do this. And I did work a little while so my thread won't be so super long because it's harder to do this when the thread is long and I didn't want to cut my thread short just for the sake of doing a video. I've had enough trouble doing it. So that stitch went all the way around. I'm gonna come back up in the same place but this, and I'm gonna hold my thread with this thumb as my needle goes to the right or the back end, because I'm working this way, to the back side of that last stitch made. Oops, don't go through that loop. Oh, why is my thread going around my hand? All right, and my thread is through the loop. Okay, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> I got up too early. Okay, now I went behind that thread. Now I wanna come up around it because I'm gonna actually go around what I call the post. And what that does is it helps to secure the, th the thread a little tighter. Now, yeah, that's gonna come out a little bit. Now I need to check my gauge because I see that this is starting to slip and you never want that to slip because it can fall off. And when it falls off, it's really challenging to get it put back on. So let me insert some needles here. Keep grabbing a different color. Okay, that's good. Now be careful that your needles are not coming beyond your stitching. You can bring it right up to where the stitching is gonna start so that when you do your wrapping, When you do your wrapping, it's going to come over top of those. There's a needle sticking out. We'll slide it back. I got this upside down. I want it to stay the same way that I was working it so I don't confuse you. <laughs> All right. But I'm on the back side, so I need to come over here. So I can actually, since I'm working around this way, when I put this, it needs to actually go on the opposite side. Since I'm on the right and I'm working towards the left, I want this needle to come up right to the left of that stitch, the post stitch. That way it helps hold it better and also won't slip. Okay. Now when I come around again, I'm gonna come to the opposite side. See how I came up? I came up right there. Next I wanna come up on this side of the stitch. So I wanna to look to make sure Oops, don't do that. Hold it a little tight. Okay, stay over here. All right. Why did I do that? All right, here is where I'm going to kind of pull those together. to wrap. Okay, I've 
only down about a quarter of an inch and I want to come up on this side right there. And going around again, including both. This time I'm coming up on the right side. See, I'm having a hard time holding this like this. This is why I don't like to work from the side. Why did I go back down there? I wanted to come up here. All right, when you make a mistake, take your needle off the thread. Oops, don't tangle, don't tangle. It twists, and then you think you have a knot, when really it's just a twist. Okay. Take this off. I went, I came down, I came up in the wrong place. So, I want to take out this last stitch. Use the back end of my needle. It's not it's not where I wanted to go. You know, it's so much easier to concentrate when you're only doing one thing. You're just working the basket. But trying to explain and trying to give a good example. <laughs> it's, all right, where am I? I am here on the top. So when I come around, I actually want to come around this way between them see because the second stitch is where I want to wrap around the post so I've come up on the left side I'm going down on the right side this is like the tie stitch and it's hurting my fingers holding it like this ah, that's a strain on the hand that's why I'm going to flip it over now and do it the way I prefer. Okay, I need another needle. And I'll show you, it's a whole lot easier the other way. Less strain on my hand. Okay, because if I hold it this way, and my needles are fed from this direction, I've got four fingers. That makes it easier to hold because that's where I'm working right here. So I, it's when I have it this way, I'm, I'm having to hold it in an awkward way. So I'm going to do it the right way now. <laughs> oh, I still feel like I need another needle. That's it's just a little too, a little bit too loose. Make sure the needle comes right up to there. Okay. Now I go around the post, finish going around the post, and now I'm gonna wrap this way. Okay. Now I'll hold this together and I've got all my four fingers to be able to hold it. Go to the back side of the stitch. Okay, when I come around the second time, this time I'm going to go between here. I know my thumb's right under it, so you can't see. I went right down, right down here. But I was trying to hold it tight while doing it, so. So that's why my thumb got in the way. Oh, computer, why did you go to sleep on me? And then I come up right here on the opposite side of that stitch so that I am going all the way around the post. Okay. I want it on the back side so that I can continue to wrap. See, I can let go of that and it won't unravel. But if I just wrap, 
and I don't do that locking stitch going around the post, which is the stitch that goes around here. Oops, camera is on the left side of the phone, not the center of the phone. This stitch right here, see? It goes around the post. The post is a stitch that comes around and it comes down here. It's a straight post. I, I call it a post. Okay, so now I go back to wrapping. And I'm doing it the way I prefer. Right now I'm, it's, it's free from this thing. I just do a little bit. The sides where it's not, you're not bending it as, as much, isn't so hard. Where it's harder is around here where it's a, t a tighter bend. But as this expands bigger, it will get easier. But I do have to decide how far am I going to go with this. Now that you understand how to wrap and coil, the rest of this video will show you some of the challenges of starting a basket this way. I actually did edit out some of those frustrations, otherwise the video would be too long. I recommend you watch the entire video before starting a basket, and then you can decide if that is how you want to start a basket or not. <laughs> struggles. Cat. I could do an entire video on all the things that can go wrong with starting a basket and all the frustrations of trying to video record while starting a basket, which only makes focusing on the basket project all the more difficult. Don't get me wrong. I love making baskets. I just don't like make a basket without a center. My usual way in making baskets is a very relaxing hobby. I think I enjoy basket making even more than painting and I am an artist. But I am confident that this will be a beautiful basket. It'll be in the stitch work and the colors, not the center. The center is not going to be the focal point. It's going to be the colors, combinations, and the stitches. I plan to incorporate all the thread colors throughout this basket, which is why I chose to mix up the colors with the needles. I plan to demonstrate some new stitches or combinations of stitches with this basket. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to see where this basket project is going to take me. You may have noticed that some of my basket making tutorials have disappeared from YouTube. They were demonetized so I deleted them. But I do have them over on Rumble where I have a channel devoted strictly to pine needle basketry. YouTube has not been kind to me so I am branching out to new platforms. All the videos over there are not here on my YouTube channel. Some of them were posted exclusively only on Rumble and were never over here. I will put the link in the description below this video. Please go over there and subscribe and when you find something helpful give it a rumble which is kind of like a thumbs up. Part of this basket project will be on YouTube and the rest of it will be on Rumble. That is just how I'm going to have to do things on this topic. My hand has been forced. You gotta do what you gotta do to survive in this doggy dog internet world. I would appreciate your support by giving me a thumbs up and leave me a comment or question or share my video somewhere. All of those things help improve my algorithms here on YouTube and over on Rumble, who I hope will become a great rival to YouTube as it grows. Thanks for watching.